Hey, Dr. C here with you. So how do you lose weight if you've got adrenal fatigue? This is one that we hear a lot. People struggle with being low energy, being tired, and having the double whammy of having their weight be a real issue. And that's tough. You know, when you're wiped out, you can't just make radical changes. You can't ramp up exercise. You can't make big dietary changes without crashing. So this is serious. For starters, I'm going to briefly touch on adrenal fatigue and the presupposition behind that. There's an idea that the adrenals get fatigued, and things that go wrong that involve them can certainly contribute to fatigue and contribute to many other symptoms and big risks to your health. But they don't really get tired, except for in really rare cases in which your body attacks them. So we call that Addison's disease. More of the garden variety condition, I like to call adrenal stress, adrenal dysfunction, because they're part of the issue, but they're not the cause. The situation is the body is stressed as a whole. And the adrenals, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, they together are called the HPA axis. And they together decide that when there's been chronic stressors, you got to ramp things down. You can't push it as hard as you would otherwise. And your body gets a sense that you may not make the best decision unless you're forced to. So it can cause fatigue to force that decision. So the solution is not so much how to, you know, stimulate the adrenals, but how to really let them heal. And with that perspective, let's talk about how, if you're in that situation and weight loss is a struggle, what you do about that. Well, there's seven big tips that I'll go through with you. First one is an idea called carb cycling. Now, this phrase has been used in different ways. I use it to refer to cycling carbohydrates within the day, meaning that you have more later in the day than you have earlier in the day. Here's the rationale behind that. So cortisol, that's one of the main adrenal hormones. And when it's not working right, it's the one that blocks weight loss. Now, cortisol regulates blood sugar. And specifically, cortisol and glucose, they sit on a seesaw. So when one goes up, one goes down. Now, you want cortisol to go down at night. So a trick for that is have some healthy good carbs and have some ones that contain glucose. What are some good options? Well, we'll find glucose in vegetable starches, intact whole grains, and beans and legumes. So we can think about any things from those categories, squash, uh, buckwheat, uh, brown rice. Those are all good sources of glucose. And with reasonable amounts at night, that can support nighttime cortisol reduction. This was a real big theme in the adrenal reset diet. And we did a clinical trial and we showed that just by eating the same amount of food, but proportioning it to where carbs were at night, that by itself could heal cortisol levels. And this was inspired by other studies. There was a large one done on Israeli military. And this one is pretty well designed. They gave these people the same amount of food, the same types of food, but all they did is push the carbs at night. And they saw radical improvements in body fat, body weight, blood pressure, cholesterol, all these various metrics. So it's a real cool trick, but you can make your body work a whole lot better by shifting carbohydrates to the evening and focusing on getting some in the evening. Uh, tip number two, do a jumpstart reset for four weeks. So your body wants to be in a state of balance. You know, you want to have a good amount of resiliency and it doesn't take doing things flawlessly forever. But if you go above and beyond for a few weeks, you can often get to a state to where you regain your resilience. And what that means is your body can fix itself by itself, you know, once you get that back again, things can slide off the ducks, like water slides off the duck back, you know, your body can have some capacity for stressors and imperfections. So for four weeks, dial in some of these habits, especially the carb cycling, and commit to it for that time frame, you know, watch your symptoms, uh, look at the adrenal quiz.com, recheck your celebrate cortisol, some way to gauge your progress and just see how you responded. But what happens oftentimes is that after four weeks of doing things really well, you often get more leeway to not do things perfectly, but still get the benefits as if you did. Okay, tip three is meal replacements. Now, this was a lot of the research that I used behind the metabolism research diet, metabolism research, metabolism reset diet. With this idea, people get sufficient amounts of protein, but they're going low on empty calories on calories they can 
void for a while. And also, there's very few things to think about. You know, it turns out that part of the issue with weight loss is eating less food. That's hard. But a big part of the issue is eating deliberately and eating differently, having to be aware and conscious and thinking through all of your food decisions. And it seems that we've got a finite capacity to make decisions. So when we burn through that capacity at you know noon or afternoon, by evening, we can go off the rails. So the fewer moving parts we have to keep track on, the longer we can get through the day without going off the rails. <laughs> so meal replacement's really simple. You know, and the thoughts I've had about that are, you get the protein, you get the simplicity, and it makes it predictable. So a format that I used in Metabolism Reset was to do breakfast and lunch as a protein shake, and then do a normal dinner. You've got the option of throwing in some veggies for snacks if you wish, but what happens is people have a higher rate of compliance. It's much easier for them. So that's the third big tip. Fourth one is long, slow distance training. Now, if you've got some level of chronic stress, you can't do high intensity training and you can't do frequent hard training, but you can do gentle training for longer periods of time. So as you're recovering, you may not do the intervals, the HIIT workouts or whatnot, but you can do the long walks. You can do the, the scenic hikes. You can do the leisurely rides. So yeah, add in long, slow distance training. Uh, the, the funny acronym in endurance sports is LSD, you know, long, slow distance. And if you do this gentle enough, you'll get a lot of the benefits of helping metabolism and burning fuel, but you won't strain your body. Now, during if you're doing the formal metabolism reset diet, then the endurance activities, the long, slow distance, that's for after the reset phase, that's for in the maintenance phase. But if you're on maintenance and helping your adrenals, this is an easy way to make things better. All right, tip five is to deliberately bring down cortisol after dinner. Now, we talked before about how we want this morning increase, nighttime decrease of cortisol. And for many people, the nighttime decrease is the tough part to really dial in. An easy trick is to engage your big muscles in the night. Now, what I mean by that is you're not going to the gym, you're just going for a walk. You know, super easy, make it a habit after dinner of doing a walk around the block. You know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that can be all it takes to completely transform your evening cortisol. What happens is the GLUT4 receptors in your muscles engage and they cause your body to decrease the amount of circulating cortisol. It's that easy. Now, movement of any type helps, but when it's continuous and when it uses your larger body muscles, it gives you the most benefit. And that's why I say go for a walk around the block. It's a nice time to clear your head later in the day anyway. Okay, we got two more. So number six, this is a cool thing. This is really about a concept called resistant starch. And one of my favorite food sources of resistant starch is the potato. <laughs> There have been books written on the benefits of potatoes, and a lot of it probably comes back to their content of this thing called resistant starch. So the more our blood sugar steadies, stay steady, the healthier we tend to be, especially with our stress response. And there have been multiple ways this has been looked at, but few foods make our blood sugar steady more than potatoes. A couple of tricks. When they're cooked at lower temperatures, they're more beneficial than when they're cooked at higher temperatures. So you probably could have guessed that potato chips and french fries are out of the menu for this, and they are. Baked potatoes can help a bit, but if you really wanna get the benefits, you wanna do boiled potatoes. Uh, quick, trip for any, quick trick for any chefs out there, you can boil your potatoes and then do a fast sear on the surface if you want some of that browning. So don't sear it so it heats all the way through, but a real quick sear on each side and you can have them still kind of browned if you like, but boiled works fine as it is. They can be salted, you can mash them up, but boiled potatoes have the greatest density of resistant starch of most any common food. And if you chill them, that only goes up. So chilled and reheated a couple times can give you even more benefit. But adding in potatoes, especially early in the day, can make your blood sugar stable and make it let your cortisol stay on track throughout the whole daily rhythm. And number seven is going to be uh, basil. Uh, and all types of basil are great. There's one called holy basil or oxynum sanctum. There's also culinary basil, and they're all quite similar. The amounts that are used are probably more relevant than the type that is used. 
And I say that because with culinary basil, you can consume pretty massive amounts easily. Massive amounts compared to what you would get from supplements or capsules is what I mean. Uh, make up some good pesto. You know, you can do that with just basil and some fresh lemon juice. It can be that easy. A pinch of salt, pinch of cayenne, you want to throw in some garlic, you can get fancy. But just, just those things, some kind of a liquid base that can be extra virgin olive oil, that can be aquafaba from some beans. But yeah, just some basil, liquid base, some lemon, a blender, food processor, magic bullet. You've got a phenomenal sauce or dip for most anything. And using that in good amounts a couple times per week has been shown to improve the HPA resilience and therefore improve the cortisol metabolism. There's also data on basal improving satiety with a meal, which means that you'll fill up more quickly. So there's seven easy tricks. Now, big picture, as your adrenals get healthier, weight loss can get easier for people. And we saw that with our clinical trials for the adrenal reset diet. If your cortisol rhythm is backwards or always high or always low, it's hard to lose weight. It's not impossible, but it's hard and it's hard to lose fat. When cortisol is off, your body will give up muscle mass easier than it gives up fat. And the drawback there is you'll slow your metabolism. You'll regain the weight. You'll be in just as bad of shape right afterward. So heal your cortisol as you do it. The weight loss can be more fat loss and the fat loss can be lasting. All right, Dr. C with you. Take great care and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.